Yes, guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another review. And it's weird. Back to back wins, including an away game. Don't really know what to make of this one because there's so much to take from this game of football. 3 0 up, cruising, comfortable. And we still make that game look difficult. We still come out that game thinking, wow, we've caught life. We still come out this game thinking the game management was utterly pathetic. <laughs> Even in a, an away game where we scored three goals in what's meant to be a tricky away ground for us to visit. It still feels like we needed a little bit more. Even though we got the three points. I know everyone's going to say, oh, you're so negative and all of this crap. I, I don't. Yeah, man. You already know what I'm going to say coming out of this game. You already know that it's all not going to be completely positive. So if you don't like it, here's the small violin that I just got for your little asses, bruv. Keep crying in my comments section. Because I'll take the views and I'll take the ad revenue anyway. So you can hold that. But yeah, Luton Town 2, Chelsea 3. Obviously would have taken the result knowing it going into the game. But... The performance just makes me feel kind of grateful that we left with three points because by no means did we deserve it. The first half was decent, always better than the second half, even though it was a little bit sloppy at times, especially after the first goal. Really and truly, we got given the goal on the platter, but fair play to Cole Palmer for putting the ball into the back of the net. Madwaki as well took his finish really well, but between the first and the second goal... We were starting to lose control a little bit. Like, we were looking sloppier. We were struggling to retain possession. We weren't really doing too well on the wings. It was just the case that Luton weren't really making us pay for it. But we still looked a bit sloppy at some times. There was periods where um, the likes of Kaiseido was struggling in possession. I was wondering why initially. But then I saw the average team position of that game. And now I don't have no, no, any criticisms at all. For um, Kaiseido because he was left there by himself. He was literally left there by himself. Gallagher was yet again just roaming around like one Rottweiler and not keeping to his position. So all the struggles that Kaiseido had defensively and dealing with the press and lunging into tackles too much. He had no one around him. He was by himself. Because this, this Rottweiler is just running around doing absolutely nothing. And you wonder why I don't care if this guy leaves in January. He is not worth this hype, this crying and this bitching and this moaning. If Tottenham come in, slap 55 million or 60 on the table, he's gone. He's gone. Because he's mid, he's average, man. It was another poor performance from Conor Gallagher. He spent the whole time at right wing in Madwaki's position. Madwaki was playing deeper than Gallagher. And this is the guy that Poch has criticised for lack of defensive work rate, by the way. He's doing more of Gallagher's job than he is. And he still scored. Ah, oh, it's ridiculous, man. I can't hear Madwaki and lack of defensive work rate in the same sentence now. Especially from a guy who, before this game, had an obsession with starting Sterling. Even though he's the worst winger out of the lot when it comes to defensive work rate. But big up to Kaiseido, big up to Madwaki, big up to Malo Gusto, who helped with the overlaps on the right-hand side. Big up to Palmer, unbelievable, unbelievable, sensational football from him. Kept, kept attacking the goal. We don't have enough forwards who do that without overthinking everything. For the second goal from him, work of art. Work of art. Mr. Only scores penalty goals now as more non-penalty goals than Bukayo Saka. Imagine that. By the way, Madwaki, more goals than Martinelli in all competitions now this season. Nicholas Jackson, more goals than the entire Arsenal front line this season. I cannot hear Arsenal fans slander our forwards anymore. I can't hear it. I'm not listening to it. Because it's just bullshit and copium from a team whose attackers have been fucking meaty this season. Absolute mid-pack, all of them. All of them. Um, But yeah, I want to shout all of those players out. Petrovic as well. 
absolutely saved us in the second half when we were getting cooked on crosses. Knows the right thing to do with decision-making all the time, whether to hoof it, whether to pass it. He's making the right decisions. This was his test, and he passed it with flying colours. Brilliant from him. But I want to shout out these individuals. I want to shout out Thiago Silva as well for some key blocks in the first and second half. Even if the crossing and the man marking wasn't good, he did his job there. The sassy as well. Colwell did his job defensively. But I want to shout out all of these guys. Because this was about moments of brilliance. This was about individual moments and individual performances. Poch has fuck all to do with this one. Because yet again... Yet again, it's shit game management from Pochettino. Yet again, the game management makes us worse. Yet again, we come out for the second half and we are a worse team. We come out in the second half slower. We afford Luton so much space on the wings so they can cross us to death. And it nearly worked. Because we can't mark crosses to save our life. We can't defend crosses to save our life. From set pieces, from corners, we stink. The, the game management made no sense. We bring on Nkuku to be a target man. And we play hoofball up to him. He's like, what, 5'10"? He's like my height, for fuck's sake. We bring on Enzo to come on in the fucking 10 position. And we keep Gallagher in the pivot. Or slash right wing slash whatever the fuck Gallagher wants to do. <laughs> well, we're lucky the attack just bailed him out. In all honesty. We are lucky because this guy's set pieces, this guy's tactical organisation and his game management fucking sucks. It absolutely sucks. And he just gets away with it off the back of moments of brilliance and people act like Pochettino's turning a corner. He's not turning a corner. He's not. The players are just getting results. And fair play to the players. For an attack that's been criticised so heavily this season, they are saving him. They are saving him. Through moments of magic. Like, it's not been good. It's not been good from the setup to the game management. None of it's been good. But we still have victories. We're still on the winnable run of games. And we've got two on the bounce. Cool. Now we go to Preston. Don't make it difficult. Don't make it difficult at all. Middlesbrough, same energy. Batter them in the first leg. So we can go into the second leg with a little bit of confidence. With the ability to rotate a little bit more. Fulham, you better win that game, man. Newcastle have a difficult run of games. They, have, they start the new year away at Anfield. Then they face Man City. And then they face Aston Villa. They are bound to drop points. We can catch up to them. While that happens, West Ham play Brighton. One of them will drop points. We can catch up to them. Man United's a shit. So we can catch up to them if we're, if we're serious. Why don't we just try and be serious for once in, once in our lives? Why don't we try? But yeah... It's good to come out of here after a victory. Big up to the individuals. Poch, you are a fraud. And you need to pattern up or you need to leave. And yeah, it's just good to have an away win. It's good to have an away, away win. Cole Palmer's going for Chelsea goal this season. It's a late contender for Premier League goal of the month. Although I can't lie, I'll probably go to Garnacho. Unless that goal was in November. I don't remember. I don't remember for the life of me. But... Yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Big up to everybody and peace. Enjoy the new year. Up the Chels.